Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 28, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Melissa Lucio was scheduled to be executed on April 27th, but two days before her death sentence was to be carried out, the Texas High Court granted her a new trial to hear new evidence in her case. A second chance at life after 14 years on death row. Melissa had been sentenced to death in 2008 for the murder of her two-year-old daughter, Mariah, who she says fell down the stairs accidentally. Many documentaries and articles had been created about her case over the years, and most recently, celebrity legal advocate Kim Kardashian joined in the conversation to ask for a new trial. Thankfully, in the 11th hour, Texas heard our pleas. While Melissa is not free to leave prison, she will at least receive a new trial to present evidence to prove her innocence that was not allowed 14 years before. I am so relieved. I was stressed out about this. Thank you. In other news, children being automatically given the father's last name at birth is discriminatory and harmful to the identity of the child a court in Italy has ruled. Newborns will now receive the last names of both parents, the court said in a statement. Under the current law, Italian families have been unable to give a child the mother's last name unless the mother is single or the father refuses to be a part of the child's life. Lawmaker Cecilia De Elia, a leader on women's issues, praised the decision. According to the New York Times, Cecilia said, the top court's decision has canceled the last patriarchal legacy in family law. The mother's name will have the same dignity as the father's, a sign of civilization. Indeed. In other news, Twitter accepted a $44 billion takeover offer from Elon Musk on April 25th. The world is up in arms with many pledging to quit the platform now that Elon has made a promise to turn Twitter into a forum for free speech. After the acquisition deal was accepted, Elon tweeted his definition of free speech. He wrote, by free speech, I simply mean that which matches the law. I'm against censorship that goes far beyond the law. If people want less free speech, they will ask government to pass laws to that effect. Therefore, going beyond the law is contrary to the will of the people. Well, big news like a social media takeover by the richest man in the world deserves a special time out for discussion on the feisty news for women. Today we have a debate between two feisty women, Robin Michaels, a retired Peace Corps volunteer and retired dog groomer, and Lisa Marie Monaco, an entrepreneur, mom of seven and feisty wife. Ladies, welcome to the feisty. What do you think about the breaking news that the world's richest man is now the owner of one of the largest social media networks in existence? I absolutely love it. I think he's brilliant. I think he's a genius. I love that he took Twitter by the platform. He's going to make a difference. He wants change. He's going to get change. Uh, balanced, free speech for everybody. Nobody should be banned from their opinion um, at all, ever. And I think he wants to see that change. He's very inspiring. And it's going to bring major, major changes. And I think there's more that he's going to uh, bring us besides this. And I am sort of skeptical that we're going to get positive change. I understand what he's saying, but at my, from my perspective, it looks like the guy with the most money is going to have the biggest voice. And uh, we're, we're seeing that in politics in my own neighborhood where billionaires are coming in and paying politicians to run, don't really care what their platform is. They're just not the other guy or the incumbent. And that's what I'm wondering about uh, Musk. Is he going to sort of overpower Twitter? And uh, I worry about that. No, he's going to give everybody free speech, balanced. Doesn't matter if you're left, doesn't matter if you're right, doesn't matter what your thoughts are, your thoughts are going to, you know, be put out there on that platform and you will not be banned. And I understand that. And we're going to have a whole bunch of people who are saying ridiculous stuff with authority, seeming like they 
do know what they're talking about. And unfortunately, there's just too many people who listen to stuff and can't discern what's real and what's BS. And I don't know that I would have them be banned, but I would sure have a disclaimer that says this is not true if it goes up. (laughs) I disagree. I think it's going to be inspiring. Um, He's going to create a level of, you know, balance for everybody. Um, We already have ridiculous things out there. (laughs) People are already saying ridiculous things. Um, I believe the wrong people are being banned for it. You know, let everybody have their opinion. Let everybody say their piece. And then, you know, it's up to us to see and, and hear what we want to believe, I guess, so to speak. Um, but people that are being banned for their opinion, not good. And I, and I hope that he takes on more, you know, bring Facebook to it too. <laughs> I tell you, I, yeah. I, I've been an anarchist. And uh, on one hand, they say, if uh, we, we tend to say, if voting changed any, everything, they'd make it illegal. But having worked as a planner and worked in other places in the world where people have no access, I feel your right to freedom ends where your responsibility to your community begins. And if you feel that your community is all totally wrong and you have the right opinion and you have more access to getting your opinion out, I feel that's that's dangerous. Mm-hmm. But that, I know that's how the world's evolving. I think it remains to be seen if this is going to be a positive uh development but my experience has been the rich guys come in and they put out a message and i even wonder why they let them advertise on tv you know but you're right everybody's opinion is out there and this is what we get when we have free speech i think the reason why he did this is because he's tired of people not being able to express themselves and being banned I believe that this is going to be a really great, inspiring thing. I I don't think he's going to take it over. I think he's going to allow people this platform to express their thoughts. And that is a brilliant thing to me. Absolutely. And I I feel very cautious about this. Uh, I feel it could be very dangerous by being laser fair and saying, no matter what you want to say, you're welcome here because it does influence a lot of people. Mm. Thank you, ladies, for your feisty views. I'm curious to see what Elon is going to do with this platform. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, it's time for a break. What do you do if someone doesn't respect your chosen pronoun? How do you handle the married life when you never thought you'd get married? Answer to these questions right after the break. Be right back. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm on a mission to empower women in the workforce one outfit at a time. When I first started my career as a chemist and a chemical engineer for the government at age 20, my average coworker was a middle-aged male in a business suit. In order to look the part, I had to find the equivalent in women's workwear. That wasn't as easy as it sounded. Back then, there were only two options. The first were high-end boutiques where you could go spend multiple hundred dollars on one piece. Um, This was outside my 20 year old budget. So what I ended up doing was going to the big box stores or the mall stores uh, where things were more affordable, but they were low quality and often left me looking and feeling frumpy. Because I don't believe any woman should ever have to deal with this struggle, I created Executive by Stephanie, a woman's workwear brand that is affordable, high quality, and made right here in the US. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about Cashel de Rosario, a fourth year student at the Wake Forest School of Medicine and trans activist who bragged on Twitter that she intentionally stuck a needle twice into a patient during a blood draw after he mocked her pronoun pin? But what about a school in central Sweden who paid a non-binary student $5,000 
12,000 pounds in damages after a teacher refused to refer to the student using the gender neutral pronoun. And a professor at Shawnee State University reached a $400,000 settlement with the school after being punished for refusing to use a transgender student's preferred pronoun. Hmm. There's lots of angst around pronouns these days. So what do you do if you meet someone who does not respect your preferred pronoun? Listen, as the world becomes more aware of the fluidity of gender identity and it becomes common to request preferred pronouns, let us first understand that change comes over time. We also need to accept that we can't control everyone's reaction to us or their interactions with us. Yes, we can decide for ourselves which gender we identify with, and that is a win for everyone. Yet, fighting battles with every person we meet over our preferred pronouns is not a good way to create peace in this world. Consider that the person who doesn't respect your pronouns may be stuck trying to hang on to traditions that help them to define their lives as good and moral, and your pronoun preferences are taken away from their self-confidence in their own choices. Please also consider your pronoun preference as a litmus test for who's allowed to remain in your world. Everyone you meet isn't a permanent part of your life. Most people are transient and unimportant to your life story. Let them come and go. You don't have to control everyone around you, especially if they have hundreds of other people demanding different pronouns and it's hard for them to keep up. Give them some grace. The real important players in your life will be the ones who learn your pronoun preferences and respect them enough to make the effort to address you in the way that you prefer. Let this be a test to determine who really cares about you. A professor you'll have for a single semester, a bus driver, a new trainer at work, do they really matter in the long run? Let them show you whether they matter or not by giving them the chance to respect your pronouns. If they don't, no big deal. They're just another background character who will soon fade away. The major players, the sidekicks, the love interests, the ones who will teach you your greatest lessons about life will remain and respect your preferences because they're supposed to stay, okay? In other news, we're living the feisty life and honestly, sometimes we find ourselves living out dreams that we never, ever thought we would have for ourselves. It's hilarious when what we thought we wanted for our lives turns out not to be what's best for us. You gotta check out Melissa's story. She said she cried when she was faced with her new dream come true. Melissa, what happened to define your feisty life that you never thought would happen to you? Hi, my name is Melissa, and believe it or not, I'm happily married. In fact, I've been happily married for 18 years to someone that I have known for over 25 years. Now, let me just say this, happily married, it can have an exclamation or a question mark, and I have had both through the course of my relationship. Before I was married, I was single. I was living in Harlem, in New York City. I was an entrepreneur, I was doing my thing. I cannot cook to save my life. I was eating out every night, I had an amazing social life. In fact, friends of mine would always say, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Because I want to tag along, because it could have been going to the newest restaurant, or it could have been taking a three-day trip to Miami. However, all of a sudden, I met this woman, a woman that I had known for a long time and never, ever, 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 ever imagined she would come back into my life. But because of professional circumstances, we found ourselves back together. And what was designed to be a very professional relationship where we were working together evolved into something that was very personal. We realized that we weren't really friends at our undergraduate school, but we certainly knew of each other. She was a model. I was the finance nerd who was running businesses on campus. And so we were familiar with each other. But over the course of time, I got to know who she was beyond being on a runway. She got to know who I was besides being a finance geek. And ultimately, we fell in love. Now, it was a little more complicated than that because she already had four kids. And I was living single in New York City in Harlem. And I'll never forget the day that we decided we were going to be together, not necessarily married, but at least be together. I agreed because it was easier for me to move than her. I moved from New York City to Bethesda, Maryland. And I'll never forget, I had made so many trips before, but on this last and final trip, when I said, literally said goodbye to my Harlem home and they pulled up to our house, there was a white picket fence. 
And I literally sat down on the curb and started crying because I said, oh my God, I have sold my soul for suburbia. And that was a major shift, not to mention the shifts of managing kids, of managing blended families, of managing young people who have learning disorders and knowing nothing about children, to actually finally agreeing one day to have our own children, which was probably the most frustrating process ever because people said it was a life choice and doctors would not do a transfer IVF. And so we had arguments, we had high we had lows. Was it really worth the effort? Should I move on? Should I go find somebody else? Should I have a kid? Which definitely was the answer was no. And realize that in the tiny things that were going on, we realized that ultimately we were meant to be together because there are much bigger things for us to do. When I realized that uh, the potential of spending my life with this person, it scared the hell out of me. I grew up in a single parent household. My father passed away when I was three months old of a massive heart attack. And so I did not grow up around relationships, nor did I grow up around successful relationships. And so I really wasn't sure what I was getting into. And i never forget, my wife and I now went to a conference and she ended up proposing to me. And she took me out into the desert because we both have native heritage in us and we were out on sacred land. She got down in one knee and she reposed to me and I was like, holy shit, what is happening? And I know that I said yes, when we got back to the hotel room, we were supposed to actually go to a Halloween party. And she tells the story that I sat on the couch rocking back and forth for at least an hour because I just could not wrap my head around what was happening. And as you can imagine, as somebody who never saw themselves in a long-term relationship, I had to learn how to share. I had to learn how to share her with her kids. I had to learn how to share stuff with the kids. I also had to learn that working was the end all be all. I'm completely driven by the work that I do, but I realized that if you're gonna be in a relationship, you can't just work all the time. You have to carve out time for that person. You have to carve out time to have dates. I could easily sit at my desk or sit at home and be on my phone or working or talking to entrepreneurs and helping them. And I realized that that's not successful. She has taught me that it's important to have a date night at least once a month. She's made it important that we have mutual friends that I don't get to hang out with my friends. So she gets to hang out with her friends, but it's important that we have a community around us. So with all the slings and arrows of judgment from religious groups and mockery on television shows and stereotypes, you need a community to be able to surround you. And so I think that is the most important thing that has actually saved our marriage is the community and the village that we have. They say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to keep a marriage happy. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing your love story with us. You know, maybe our imagination limits us. Maybe what we really need to experience isn't anything we can conceive of just yet. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women.